Welcome back to the Upper Tier Podcast, the football podcast we bring you each and every day at this stage. Brought to you by the Dynamo uh, Dynamo Podcast Network on YouTube. Head over there and smash that subscribe button and bell notification. And as always, like and share our videos and support our podcast. And joining me today, we have one of the OGs on the show at this stage, nearly on every video, Craig Bourne. Craig, how are you doing? All right, Niall, good to see you. I'm making his return all the way directly from Ellen Road. Yeah. Dean Brain. How are you doing, Dean? Thanks very much, man. Good to be here. Great, great to have you on. Well, as we said already, this show is a look at Barcelona based on what happened the other night. I thought it would be important to do a show to have a look back um, at what the key issues are in Barcelona. Look at their successes over the years and also sort of where they've gone wrong and where some of the failures have come to find themselves in the position they're in now. And obviously asking ourselves, is this really the end of an era really for Barcelona and that great Barcelona side, no doubt. Um, so, lads, where do, where do we really begin with this? You know what I mean? I, I mean, I suppose we should start saying 2009 with yeah. Pep, Pep Guardiola. And this is where you, you really see the, the, the force of Barcelona as a, as a world footballing power. Not that they weren't. I mean, they were very successful previously with Frank Reichardt. But that Guardiola team was unbelievable there where you have Messi, Xavi, Iniesta, all at their peak, all incredible footballers. You know what I mean? Um, and a, a great manager that we all know, Alex Ferguson, stated that it's the best team he's ever faced. Yeah. Craig, what's your thinking in that period there under Guardiola? Uh, that period, Noel, I just thought, like, you know, it wasn't like a select few elite teams, as we're so used to seeing. Obviously, Dino's Real Madrid. It wasn't even like, you know, AC Milan, Inter Milan, Juventus, Bayern Munich. It was just these were, ahead. even the English teams at Man United, they made Man United look so ordinary in the Wembley final. And it was just, like, we were on a different planet. Nothing could go wrong. They were blowing people away. You were just kind of looking forward to seeing who was going to score for Barca and looking forward to them playing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Teams are already defeated. And I think, going back to the Guardiola era, what worked very well with that group of players is uh, Pep Guardiola had such an open relationship with all of them. As, like, it was, a, it was a level playing field from him down. It wasn't like, you know, I'll go off to the staff and have a chat with them about, I don't think he's doing well or whatever. It was more like a family orientated thing. Obviously, Pepe played for Barcelona before. But he got them all just on a nice wavelength. Like even Messi at the time was a bit younger. And he was more, he was obviously a star player, but he was more, I think, leveled. And he was more grounded under Pep Guardiola. There was nobody, you know, like Chabby's getting a few lads in the locker room separately aside under Pep to talk and all. It was just so mutual and so respectful. And they all enjoyed it. And I'd say they couldn't wait to go out and bat their teams. <laughs> like... Yeah, in that time, uh, Dane, uh, Pep, 14 titles he won in that time. Three leagues, two Champions Leagues, two Copa del Reyes, three Spanish Super Cups, two European Super Cups, and two FIFA World Club Cups. Now, if you think back to Liverpool there last season, when they went out and they won a league, the year before they won a Champions League, and then they won the Super Cup and the World Club Cup. Imagine the, the Fiore all around that from the Liverpool fans and stuff like that. Imagine at that time back then being a Barcelona fan where you're just scooping everything. What was your thinking at that time, Dean? The, the best thing that I've, I've seen, the best football team I've seen, 100%. They were honestly unbelievable. The Xavi and the Esther in the centre were incredible. I don't think you'll ever have a better midfield pairing for years to come anyway. Now, my, that's in my opinion. But um, yeah, then you had, you had like, like some Messi, even like, Valdez at the back, and then you had PK and an old head and Puyol there as well. They were just absolutely incredible. They they used to torture the life on Man United, which is great, obviously. <laughs> but um, yeah, they were unbelievable. Pep, they, they won six. They done they done my boy on it as well. They won the six trophies in a year slash season, which is not many teams are ever going to do. It's only been done twice so far. They're just unbelievable. Yeah, you'd never, you'd never see a team. I don't think we'll ever see a team as powerful as that again. I really don't in our in our time. Um, you know, looking back on it, they were just they were just incredible. And and you got to remember as well. Craig alluded to the fact how good they were against United, and that was a top United team at the side. You know, that was a t- team, a United team at the time that was blowing everything in the Premiership away. It's like scary, no, it is. Uh, you just touched on 
like how powerful and a force that United team was and still wasn't even on like near Barcelona. Like Barcelona weren't even now a gear, like you know the way they were playing as Dino alluded to Xavi and Iniesta play like they're at the back at times, you know, they just yeah. you know playing ball like boy beside like it's it's scary. Like I remember I remember that match when it went to one all and then all of a sudden Barca just turned it up a notch. It was like it was like at one all they'd only been playing like a training session, just so, playing yeah. around. And all of a sudden, when when United got the equalizer, I think they just turned it up a notch. And the next thing, it was like it was like they had twenty lads on the pitch. They just they they went through United like they didn't exist. And, and that was a top United side. You know what I mean? And for fair for Ferguson to say that as well, I mean, like you you won't get a better you know recommendation and you know compliment. From another manager, I mean, Alex Ferguson, arguably one of the best managers him. ever. Go ahead. When Ned Peck went to New York for a year, was it or something like that? But they were going to seminars and stuff together. Yeah, so I think he was hoping Pep would jump ship to the red side. But sadly, I thought that, that was going to be the case I mean, before City obviously came. I think we all maybe had a, an awful eye looking at that. So. <laughs> yeah, obviously, we were well, most of us were praying that he wouldn't, you yeah. know what I mean. Um, so then you sort of you sort of move on from Pep. Pep moved out, and then we had kind of two seasons roughly there with Villanova won one La Liga, and Martinho won one Super Cup, um, and and then we move on to sort of the Luis Enrique era, which again was incredible, and unfortunately cut short because of the passing of his daughter um, with cancer. He took a step back from football, but what an incredible player! What an incredible coach! And again. You know, this is where you see the likes of Neymar, Suarez, Rakitic, Busquets really coming into the round as well. And then you also have the Chavis and the ENSs and the Messies of this world in there as well. And as Dean alluded to, you know, Valdez and Puyol and PK and like just an incredible team, you know what I mean? Um, Dean, talk to me about Luis Enrique when he was in there. I mean, I know you're a Real Madrid fan, but I mean, he must have, he must have tore your heart out a few times watching Spanish football. They used to just tear around with other part. Honestly, every every you're watching it. You no, know, before the game, it's a big derby. You're like, oh, it might be a good game, but you just you just know, like they were just way too good. I think was I don't know if he was was he there. I don't think he was there when Messi ran the pitch. Was he? I don't think that was him against Getafe. But they just literally tore. No, against Real Madrid, no, against... the Champions League in the semi. Yeah. They just literally tore around with other part all the time. Like you had you had your odd games where Ronaldo would pop up and. You'd win one nil or two one Ronaldo, but it was all literally on Ronaldo from the Barcelona side. You were getting the goals from Suarez, um, Iniesta. You know what I mean? Players like that. It was just incredible. Look. Yeah. What was what was your memories at that time, Craig? Yeah, it's just I thought obviously when Pep Guardiola stepped away and then Tito obviously took over. Rest in peace, obviously himself. And then the the Super Cup, you know, for Barcelona isn't enough, sadly, for that manager at the time. And when Enrique was brought in. You could see how intense he was and, you know, he wouldn't accept anything less. The Super Cup was a failure for Barcelona, let's be honest. And when he came in, you could see, you know, how much he demanded from them. And it's like they've got another kick up the hole again and they enjoyed it. You know, they enjoy someone who's on that, as I said, with Pep Guardiola, Enrique, former player, great player, understands the style and system. So it doesn't need to be drilled that far back into them. It just needs to be reminded, kind of like, we're going back to what we know best. And as Dino alluded to, they were, like they went even kind of like you know looking for people to score. It was just kind of happening. The tick attack it was just so fast and ferocious. Someone was on the end of it. But as Dino said, it could have been anybody. Yeah, you're looking. You're looking at Luis Enrique there. Nine trophies out of thirteen, he won. Like incredible. Like you know, it's just so dominant. You know, across Europe, in Spain, and then even when you go out into those international trophies and stuff like that, you know, just incredible. Re- really, really unfortunate that like um his daughter passed away at the time and, you know, he had to take a step back from football and stuff like that because I, I think if he had stayed on, I mean, I, I think he I think he probably would have coasted by uh, Pep Guardiola's record, to be honest, you know what I mean? Because they were, they were comfortable were, under him. They were on such a run, yeah. yeah. But it, it's, like, it's like when we talk about, you know, when they bring in managers that know the sure. Barcelona way, you know? Um, go ahead there, Dan. Enjoy. That Messi didn't pick the team for since Guardiola. There's a lot of and stuff like that that Messi would be telling 
like Tata Martino and Villanova and all that. Look at he should be playing, he should be playing. Yeah. And I think Enrique with whom their manager was said, No, I'm the manager. I'll do it my way. And look how successful they were. Not saying Messi obviously obviously knows his football like but it's just a weird there's a weird time there with Messi. I think he has a lot of pull over the whole Barcelona club, not just yeah. the team itself. I fully agree with that. And like he, he wants Neymar in there badly, but yeah, well, he this wants Neymar back there, but he knew, he knew how good Neymar was. Yeah, well, this is where we kind of move into the Valverde um, error, if you like. You know what I mean? And and we look at you know two La Ligas, one Copa del Rey, one Super Cup, and that's like simply not enough. You know what I mean? For both Barcelona as a club and also the fan base, and this is where we start seeing now the emergence of Messi as a powerhouse within the offices of Barcelona, not on the pitch. Um, and Messi making demands on the club that they have to reach his level and keep him happy at his level. But then we also see, you know, the leaking of internal information, you know, you know, a lot of um, conversations going on about Messi potentially wanting out, holding them over a barrel for more money. Um, we see a sort of a scattered approach to um, transfers, you know, like players being brought in, really because of some of the financial constraints, stuff like that, Neymar going out, you know, we've seen Suarez go out and then we see them, you know, bringing in players such as, you know, Yeri Mena, De La Feu, Paulinho, Dembele, Turan, Vidal, Griezmann, Coutinho. I mean, the Coutinho one is so strange. It's just so strange. Um, and you I see the, it, you yeah, see, yeah. you see the power of Messi coming through here where, you know, he's practically running the club, you know what I mean? The guy nearly has a seat at the presidency table, you know, which is really not good from a player's point of view. Um, you know, and then in this time as well, to rub more salt in the wounds, you see the emergence of Real Madrid as a powerhouse again under yeah. Zidane, um, which doesn't help things either. They, they, You know, a massive dip in form in the Champions League, you know, four years on the trot. I think are four, either four or five years on the truck going out at, you know, quarter final or semi final stage. Or, you know, I mean, that beating they got by Bayern, you know, was a significant beating. I think it was 8 2 or something like that. It ended up or 10 2 or something like that, 8 2 on, on aggregate. And then you look at the likes of obviously, you know, Neymar and Suarez, Xavi and Ianesta. I mean, those guys are just irreplaceable. They really are irreplaceable. You look at how Suarez did in there, he was incredible in there, you know. Um, you know, and then you've you've Messi coming out during this period as well. He's he's expressing his unhappiness in public with the club, which is really, really, you know, really unprofessional and really bad. He's politicking his way through things, and he's nearly he's nearly pushing to the side himself. You know what managers come in and what players come in and stuff like that, and he expresses in how his unhappiness with the standard of player they're bringing in. Um, what you're thinking around that, Craig? Yeah, I fully agree, Noel. And I think Messi, and I fully agree with what Dino said as well, Messi is an element of one of the problems, sadly. As much as good as he is, he has way too much power. As a, but he knows his value, and he knows his value to that club. But also as well, I think Bartomeu is a massive problem. And was, sorry, was a massive problem for Barcelona. Massive. He had, I was doing a bit of research earlier, a social media company at one stage push him and the board for doing an excellent job behind the scenes and the great Messi, Guardiola and others making out to look like he has Barcelona, you know, at his priority and Messi's a bad person holding them all to ransom, which probably to an extent he is probably, you know, overpowering, overstepping his boundaries. But at the same time, I looked at it earlier, like Bartomeu, they got 220 million from Neymar and they spent it on Dembele and Coutinho. Like things like that. They give the likes of PK. And as you rightfully said, no, the NES is not. You're not going to replace them, but you have to ease them out and then blood new talent in. You don't have to go out and spend ridiculous, wasteful money. But what he did was he gave the likes of PK and whoever was around Messi to keep him happy, lucrative contracts. And these players have no sell on value. Like, who's PK going to go to? Or who's the, later, the other older kind of players going to go to? Where are they going to go after Barcelona? And where are you going to get that return? And they're on absolute mental wages. Like 80% of Barcelona's expenditure is on wage. It's absolutely disgraceful. And I remember um, there was a time when Messi and Suarez were in the stands and Griezmann had scored in the new camp and the two of them looked disgusted. You know, you think they'd be happy Barca had scored, but, you know, you could see that the two of them are like, you know, he shouldn't even be there. It, it was that kind of vibe, you know what I mean? 
Yeah, what was your thinking, Dean? I mean, there was obviously a lack of acceptance there for Coutinho, and obviously for like Griezmann was a weird move as well because, I mean, he just wasn't accepted initially either. You know what I mean? And it's 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 just, and it's like as if Messi, if he doesn't accept you, then you're you're kind of to use a term, you're blackballed into the corner there. You know what I mean? You're not you're not accepted, and that's it. And then you're pushed to be transferred out, really. You know, either on loan or resold on. You know what what you're thinking on that, Dean? Same, and I don't think it's messy. I think it's just Messi's fault that he's too good. Not not lately now with the reason team, but the likes of Henri. Henri was when he went to Barcelona, he was unbelievable. But he was just another player that was out there or didn't start. You know, like Eto, Eto was unbelievable. Like, but Messi was was always the king, and he always will be until he, he leaves. Anyway, David David Villa, but, um, not them. you know, just da- David Villa. <laughs> I think I think he got on with David Villa because yeah, a bit more. Him. Actually, well, that's actually like the score goals, you know what I mean? But yeah, yeah, I think he has a lot of pull there. That that whole thing releasing his contract, that was a disgrace. And that was because they wanted everyone to turn on him. But that's not his fault. If they offer him that money, they sign that contract and he signs that contract, the contract signed. That's not Messi's fault. You offer him two billion or a billion and a half, whatever it was, that's his money, you know what I mean? He deserves to get it. But um, yeah, I think there's a lot of pull. And I, I think they should just kind of break apart now and just try and start new. See if they can do anything like that. I mean, they have young Fatty there that hasn't been playing this season um, with the injury that he has. I mean, hopefully he's back next year. But um, yeah, I think that there's a lot of pull there and there's a lot of uh, negativity around the club concerning well, Messi anyway. It's amazing as well if you think about that time, like 2016, 18 and 19, they won the league. And I remember when we won the Champions League and especially that night that Liverpool knocked them out. I remember they went on to win the league and like it wasn't good enough. No one cared. No one celebrated. It was like it was like nearly it was disgusting that the fans turned on them, that they had only won the treble. Only won the league. Yeah, you know what I mean? It was crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Um. But then, yeah, you look at, I mean, since 2015, they've spent nearly a billion euros on players in terms of um, transfers and loan deals or whatever it is. You know what I mean? That's an awful lot of money there. You know what I mean? And this is this is a club, you remember, that's nearly, you know, that's very close to the edge of bankruptcy if they're not careful with this whole COVID thing and all. I mean, they're in debt at the moment, I think, of somewhere in the region of, well, reportedly in debt of about 1.2 billion. It's massive for a club I think like they Barcelona. Watched, uh, you know, when they let Luis Suarez go, and yeah. then they didn't replace him, which it's hard to replace him anyway. But the emergency bought Martin Braitway, who couldn't cut it at Middlesbrough. Dino obviously would know him as well. Martin Braitway, the Sorry, number one jersey at Barcelona. Team, they they relegated Laganes that season. They fucking they they bought they bought him. He was foreign on all cylinders. They were just above the relegation zone. They bought him. Emergency they weren't ball. allowed by anybody else. <laughs> Joke. And yeah. they went, went the rest of the season without a strike and they got relegated. They haven't been back since. Yeah, it's just, it's, 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 it's madness to think that the kind of moves that they made, obviously there's financial constraints there as well. I know that like, even with the Coutinho deal, the way the money had to be spaced, you know, I mean, we talk about, when we think of Barcelona and we think of Real Madrid, we think of the kings of football and the riches that goes with it and all that stuff. But obviously Craig saying there, 80% of the cost is nearly wages, which is absolutely ludicrous to let that situation happen. And obviously once you start giving out, I mean, all these guys at Barcelona, they're all superstars, no doubt about it. I know Messi is head and shoulders above them in terms of being a superstar, but they're all superstars really. So once you give out one big contract, it's like flicking those dominoes or those cards. You're going to set the ball rolling and they're all going to be knocking on the door for the lucrative contracts and it's very hard to say no. The one thing I find weird with their transfer policy is they don't tend to move players on very well. They tend to bleed players dry right till the end of their career it's... and then what they do is they either retire or they head off to China for a lucrative deal or something like that. I think that's what Ionesta did. Did he go off to China or something like that? And sign yeah, a deal or something like that? yeah, Only for a year or something. Like that. I'm not sure about Xavi. I think Xavi might have just retired. I'm not and too there's sure. the no sell on value again. You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I suppose the problem... Yeah, but I suppose I suppose the problem for them as a club as well is, I mean, are you really gonna are you really gonna sell on a Xavi or an Ionesta? Yeah, hard? Even, like, because like, they're yeah. Barcelona lifers, really. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, if you think if you think about even next season, can sure. you imagine? Can you imagine next season if you see Lionel Messi in a different shirt to Barcelona? 
I mean, it's just going to feel so weird. Like, it's going to feel so strange. You can never think it would happen, but it's very possible. You know, you you could never picture it, but it is possible, I think, in the summer. Well, I mean, if you think about it, there's really only, what, three to four clubs he could potentially go to. I mean, he's either going to go to China or he's going to go to the MLS on a massive deal. Or else he's gonna go to PSG or City or you know that that they're the only places that's gonna pay him what he wants. I agree with Dino yeah. regarding Messi. I'd like to see him get the proper send off and forget all the bullshit and just kind of you know I'm off in the summer and we leave it there. I'll play here and give everything to the end of the season and give him a proper send off. Yeah, because I suppose you would think about Messi, Dane. What you thinking on this? Yeah, I mean he has to be a future coach there or manager, doesn't he? If that's the role he goes into eventually. I think he'll end back up in uh, New Zealand. I think that that would be his final best. I think he'll play there. I think he said he always wanted to play there for a season. Imagine him and Bielsa back on New Zealand. No. Jeez, that'd be something else. But um, no, I, I think he will. I think he will leave Barca. But who, who's gonna like? Who's gonna take him? Will he want that contract anywhere else? Or are Barca just really, really stupid? Top of that, you know what I mean? And about that transfers as well. You were saying there a few minutes ago. The um, the Pjanic and the Arthur deal. Yeah. They, they got 77 million, 77 million dollars, sorry, for um for Arthur and then they spent 60 of it on the 30 year old Pjanic. It doesn't play. It makes no ever. sense whatsoever. Like. <laughs> yeah, and like, in what, two or three years, he's gone and you're never, ever going to get Why would you get Arturo Vidal? Yeah, it's 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 amazing the amount of players that they buy that never step onto the hollowed grass of the new camp. It's just mad, like you know what I mean. I mean, sometimes we look at Chelsea with the amount of players they have in the books and that they loan them out and stuff like that and all. But like you, you're talking about, I mean, they're trying to blood young for the future and stuff like that. But like with Barcelona, they've no problem buying superstars and go well off you go to Bayern or off you go. You know, it must have killed them when Coutinho scored those two goals for Bayern. It must have killed them. You know what I mean? They must have been looking at Messi going, well, this is all about you. You caused this. You know what I mean? Like, it's crazy. Like, you know what I mean? Um, so what, I mean, what, what, It is sad as well because no matter what happens, Messi's going to get the blame now, especially with this contract leaking. No matter who they lose it, oh, that's Messi. Like, from Barcelona, that's Messi. We, we could have bought this, replaced this player. It's not his fault. He even said you know when, he, it's, a, it's, when it's, he goes on international duty... For Argentina, he gets asked about the problems at Barcelona. He says, I can't do anything because everything is my fault, regardless of where I am. You know, it's shocking. He's coming out of like a, he's coming out of, um, a car park in his car and bloke was asking him, he's like, all the problems is always on me. Because it's not always me. Like he goes, I'm not the I'm not the problem here, you know what I mean? He's saying that himself, it's like there's nothing more he can do. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, if you're at a club there and you're the figurehead for it and, and I mean, your own press officer isn't doing you any favours with what gets leaked out as well in terms of how you feel. But I mean, if you're at any club really and you're taking six, seven, eight hundred thousand euros or pounds a week, whatever it is on this contract, I mean, you're kind of comparable a little way, aren't you? I mean, it's way too much. It's overboard. It's it's greed and it's taking advantage of a position that you're in for a club that you're supposedly supposed to love. And I know a lot of people listening to this tonight and watching it and all, and a lot of people, and even you guys that are on as well, I know you'll turn around and say, well, if they're willing to give you the money, take the money. But I mean, at what point do you look back and go, well, am I going to do this for the good of the club? Or is this just like, you know, another greedy take? You know what I mean? Yeah, like I mean, if you're if you're negotiating a contract with a club for six, seven, eight hundred thousand euros or pounds a week or whatever it is, plus I'm sure you get all your lucrative sponsorship uh, sponsorship stuff and bonuses and all. Mm. You're really not thinking well about the club, are you? Really, if that's the level that you're at. I've seen Bartomeu had previously contacted Xavi regarding coaching roles twice, and he says I don't want to go back and coach there. My legacy is done. And I don't want to go back and be a part of, you know, the, that reoccurring wheel. I don't know, I want to separate myself away from that. PK has come out and said as well, I'll step down. I don't mind. And it's like, there's some aura that like, you know, is it to do not only with Messi, but, you know, these lads aren't allowed to step down. As in, like you said, Noel, they're being blowed out to the guilds, you know. Well, maybe they're not in a financial position to replace him. I mean, again, how do you replace a Carlos Puyol? How do you yeah. replace a PK? He got him pity, didn't they? And he's... <laughs> 
like he's not and long lay is woeful yeah and long i mean lay is absolutely diabolical. and i mean we accept the fact obviously that there is some players out there in the world that you will never replace you know what i mean i mean you'll never replace a messi you'll never replace a ronaldo you know you'll obviously have players that come up and do really really well and are really really successful but whether whether in our lifetime again we will ever see two players going at each other at the peak of their power at the peak of their career you know it'll be hard to believe that we would witness that again in our lifetime for such a long period of time as well because those two players have been head and shoulders above any other players in the world you know what are you talking about over a decade nearly at this stage when you think about it you know every every week like like we are like for every week when it was on score especially now I don't even know you don't have a channel I don't think anymore but uh, for every week everyone watch Real Alabasta to see to see what the two lads are doing they, they, they were pulling the patches every week and if they didn't score a hat trick, you're like, oh, they're blue. Like if they didn't score a hat trick, you know what I mean? That's how that's how good the two of them are. Like you were honestly, they were unbelievable. Like, and yeah. I don't think they'll you'll ever come across. I know we had in the olden days you had Rui Hulla and just the likes of Gaza, who wasn't as good, but like he was a very good player and stuff like that. But I don't think you'll have super. They were super human. Yeah, I mean, both boys were so competitive. Like, like you see how competitive they even were, even just for the Ballon d'Or. You know what I mean? Like they were just head to head all the time, battling it out for the Ballon d'Or all the time and everything. You know, they just wanted to win everything and wanted. Like, you know, we can imagine if there was an evening kickoff and an afternoon kickoff, they'd be looking at each other to see how many did he score today, and I'm going to go out there and try and score more. And I was so competitive. Dean, you touched on something earlier. I mean, I I would believe that a number of the issues there at Barcelona, I think, lay somewhat at Messi's door. You might have a little different view there in terms of from the player's point of view. Give me give me an idea there what you're thinking. For the team? No, I mean in terms of, you know, like like I, if you go down through some of the issues that Barcelona face, obviously being in debt is related to a lot of the players' contracts and the stupidity of giving them out, but whether the players were holding them over a barrel for it, because, I mean, they're not going to let a Messi walk out the door, are you? Um, but then even in terms of the influence on transfers, the influence, you know, in, in the presidency, in the boardroom, um, you know, the leaking of information, the politicking, the, you know, the, these little things that were leaked out that we never seen in Barcelona. Like, like you would have never seen that in a Pep Guardiola day or you would have never seen that in a Luis Enrique day going to going to the, the press or, or potentially leaking out through an agent saying that uh, they're not matching my ambition. You know, that kind of thing. Now, I mean, obviously during those times, their ambitions were matched. But um, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's not like Messi hasn't been successful at Barcelona, you know what I mean? But there's levels of success, obviously, in those regions. What you're thinking in terms of, like, if, if, you're, if you're trying to put yourself into a Barcelona fan's shoes, is Messi culpable in any way for the situation that the club finds itself in? What is the club now? I think there is some things, like, there's videos out there of him pointing over to the managers telling him to sub this player off and all and you, you can't do that. That's that's your teammate, your brother, and you, you can't be going there and telling the manager to take him off. That's you are not the manager. You know what I mean? It's not your tactics, not your not your time to do that. Yeah, if you want to do that, you can do that later. Like, you know what I mean? But I think as I said, I think he does ha- have a lot he has a lot of hope, but I think the board are more with their stupid transfers and their stupid giving out contracts and stuff like that, and then leaking this stuff because Messi's agent didn't leak this. Messi didn't leak this because you, you wouldn't want that out there if you were that player, unless you want people to turn against you, i.e. the Barcelona board. Mm. Now, coming up next year is the presidential election, and one Laporte. Let's give him a second there. He'll be back now in a second. Go ahead there, yeah. And Juan Laporta is in next year for the election. And he's already come out and said that Coleman will be keeping his job. Now, we all know Coleman and Messi, even in all the press comments you've heard from Coleman, like, they obviously don't get on. So is Laporta also saying, like, OK, now it's your time to go, or else you, you'll stick to this now, and we're the bosses, and you're not the boss. Not that we haven't lost the boss, that he tries to be. It's just there's a lot of stupid stuff that the board has done, and don't get me wrong, they've, they've still won trophies over the last few years. But just no, no, never thought I'd see them in this state after seeing them from 09 onwards, the best team I've ever seen playing football. 
Yeah, Craig, I mean, obviously, I mean, again, we harp back to, you know, Lewis and Enrique having to take a step out of football, tragically over his daughter, you know. And I mean, that's really where they go down a different path, isn't it? That This is where they're really, this is where you're getting the watering down of Barcelona. Yeah. Even though there's trophies won and the success and there's leagues won. I think, I mean, Niall, uh, What about the, the fan base, Craig? The fan base, I think, were in sync with Enrique. We're in sync with Guardiola. But you forget also, Messi was in sync with them, as Dino touched on. Enrique is the boss. Guardiola's the boss, and you know they're the boss. After that, the likes of Tito, the likes of Valverde, you know, Messi's starting to go up as his stock is going up, as his credit is going up, as his, you know, his power. Because the likes, sadly, of Enrique had to go, Tito sadly passed away. Guardiola moved on. So Messi even is getting more powerful, and he knows that. As in, these are managers just coming in, and Messi's also thinking, no, as Dino said, I'll, I'll say this and I'll do that. I don't like that transfer. It's not like just a coincidence how the big powerhouse managers who had the respect for everyone went and then Messi all of a sudden had power. Bartomeu, I think, is at a real fault with the Barcelona fans, though, as well. He, I think he tried to do everything to salvage his own reputation by keeping Messi against his will at Barcelona. I think he should have just let him go. Maybe he did give him a big contract and say, look, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll leave. Here's a big contract. Just stay. Because it makes him look good. And he believes that if Messi stays at the club, then the Barcelona fans are all happy. They cannot be happy at the moment as Barcelona fans getting absolutely demolished in Europe. I think the tic tac style as well that the fans love lost its way. And I think Bayern Munich's physicality and kind of like, you know, power came in and destroyed that because they weren't allowed to do tic tac mm-hmm. because they were literally stopped off the ball. And that kind of probably came as a bit of a shock to the system. I think Dino was also right. The presidency could have a big effect on where Barcelona is going to go. And I think the, pan- the pandemic has nothing to do with their death. I think it's at the just showing their death and their real problems. It's at the exposing it that bit more. I don't think it's anything to do with the situation. Yeah, well, you would you would imagine that match day revenue for them would be massive. I mean, if you look at those stadiums, I know, Dean, you visited a couple of those stadiums over there, certainly the Bernabeu and stuff like that. I mean, they're unbelievable. I've seen some of your photographs. I was on way beforehand, you know, like a long time, especially with Bartomeu, uh, giving out the contracts to like the likes of PK, mad lucrative. And then the transfers as well are so strange. And it looks like he was just basically trying to recoup his reputation at the time. So do we do we do we all agree? I mean, is Messi going to go in the summer? Or is he going to stay? He's going to go, isn't he? I think he's going to go. I don't think the club's going to have any choice, really, from a financial point of view. Yeah. Well, you would assume you would assume it's going to be. Contact. He has to get that money. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you would assume he's going to have to take a dip in his money because he knows that that situation is a built-up falseness from being at Barcelona, you know what I mean? It's not reality. Yeah. Reality needs to come in here, you know what I mean? And he'll have to come down to reality or else he'll be he'll be watching football like the rest of us. He won't be playing it, you know? What What are we thinking going forward for Barcelona? I mean, how, how long is it going to take to rebuild this? Is it salvageable? Do they come back as a powerhouse again? Or, you know, would Messi going, would it would take some of the pressure off there? Are the fans going to go in on the club? They're Losing their, you know, they're losing their, their hero, their god, if you like, you know what I mean. I mean, are they going to give the club time to rebuild? Will they be happy? I mean, look at look at the club this season, you know how it's been performing. You know, whereas they've been okay in Europe up till this week, and um, they've been performing okay, but in La Liga they've been atrocious, really, at from their level, if you like. Um, what what do we think, Dean? Do you, do you think it's going to build up again or? As well, the size of the club and the history, and that it's it's massive, you know what I mean? And it will always build back up. You have the likes of Juventus and Bayern Munich, anytime they're brutal, they always come back and challenge them for the European Cup or they always in the leagues and cups. So I think it will take a few years, and obviously, I think Fatty is the future. That kid is just unbelievable, like, you know what I mean? That's I think one of the reasons why they're doing so bad this season without all this trouble and messy and stuff like that because it. You just you just got now. You just got every week before he got injured. But um, I think it'll take probably take a while now. If Real Madrid are not better either, and and let's go Madrid have um, Suarez and Suarez, unbelievable scoring every week as well. He, he's gonna age. And, <laughs> you know I mean? So it will take a while, and the fans have to 
fans have to have patience with them and I think they will be back 100% yeah Craig what's your thinking yeah I fully agree with you know sure look take the Milan clubs for instance look at the state they've been in and it kills me because I'm an Inter Milan but Credit where it's you. I'm delighted for Dean now that we're both battling up there and it's not you, Ray, just running away with it. Like, it's great to see. I think a cycle just has to come an end and you have to know when that cycle is, you know, finished. With Barcelona, it's now different. Messi going, I just hope it goes the right way as it's not like a dragged out thing in the summer, like, oh, he's holding out for more money or he, I just want him to go, get the proper send-off he deserves. And as Dean, I've said, it's going to be exciting, I think. You know, Pedri comes in, Fatty, when he's back from injury, all the other players might start getting a bit more comfortable, as in not Messi's not looking over me like a shadow. Messi, if it's true, isn't deciding who's playing, who's not playing. Everyone will have to step up, though, massively, because Messi's an elite superhuman being player. So everyone will literally have to put in the shift. And I just hope the transfer ridiculous carry-on stops and they invest the money properly and for the future of the club. Well, as always on these shows, we like to end with a positive note. So for you two boys, imagine in five years' time where you have a Champions League final, Barcelona, Real Madrid, and you have Messi as one manager and Ronaldo as the other. Oh, Just imagine that scenario in, in five to ten Jesus. years. Time. <laughs> something melt-watering, wouldn't it? Just Ronaldo would be like a maniac on the sideline. Um, but as always, lads, thanks for coming on. I know this is always a tough subject because we've all loved Barca down through the years, watching their football and especially the players and Messi and stuff like that. And we never like to see, you know, teams fall by the wayside like that. And, you know, we, we'll keep an eye on them now coming into the summer here to see if Messi moves. And, you know, maybe they might have to sell off some of their other stars as well to rebalance their financial position. So it could be a while before we see them back as a powerhouse, but definitely... It's, you know, it's really important that they come back as a powerhouse in La Liga because we, do, we don't want La Liga turning into, you know, you know like uh, League One in France, if you like, you know what I mean, where it's the PSG show year in, year out. You know, we like a little bit of competition. That's why we all love the Premiership. But until next time, again, head over to the Dynamo Radio Podcast Network. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that could be it. Uh, but as always, we'll offer them for <laughs> head over to YouTube to the Dynamo Podcast Network hit a subscribe there loads of brilliant content being uploaded on a daily basis by all the lads we have you covered on metal music NFL uh, comic book show wrestling you know everything's really covered football obviously all these other things all covered there for you so head over there retrotainment dropping good retro stuff every week on you know old movies and different things like gameplay and stuff like that so head over and support the whole network also if you want to support the show buymeacoffee.com forward slash the upper tier if you want to get in touch with us we're on facebook the upper tier podcast we're on twitter D at D underscore upper underscore tier. If you want to contact us, DM us if you're interested in coming on the show. Till next time, over and out.